A few years ago, I was a pastor in North Dakota. I pastored four churches, and uh, there was a story that was circulating in our community about a young boy that had died. And apparently his ghost was appearing to different members of his family. It was creating quite a stir. And then uh, word came that this ghost of this little boy appeared to his grandmother. Now his grandmother happened to know her Bible very well. And as this ghost appeared looking just like this little boy, she looked at the ghost and she said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of here. And immediately the facial, uh, the face of that spirit changed to a demonic face and then it disappeared. And the reason why it disappeared was because it was not really the ghost of that little boy. Uh, we have a great concern about Satan and his angels impersonating dead people. And so we are trying to teach what the Bible says about what happens when you die. Uh, just last Wednesday, White Horse Media produced a nine minute video about Billy Graham. And it was called uh, Bible Proof That Billy Graham Is Not In Heaven. And uh, it's amazing the responses that we've got from that, uh, that video, which has gone out to a number of networks and also posted on our YouTube channel. I'm looking right now at the stats in front of my computer, and so far we have 47,025 views in just uh, six days. And if you look at the comments, there's 468 comments. So it's created a lot of buzz, and so we've decided to uh, answer some of the questions. There's a lot of questions people are asking. There's far too many to answer just in a short response. <clears throat> but I want to just deal with the three biggest questions people have and then point you to other resources so you can do your homework and continue to study this important topic. The three primary questions that people have asked have had to do with Paul's statement in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8 about being absent from the body and present with the Lord. And another one is about the thief on the cross. And the third one is about the rich man and Lazarus. So because so many people are asking questions about these three, three uh, big issues, let me just quickly give a follow-up to our main video and just share some thoughts from the Bible. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8, Paul said, We are confident, yes, well, we are well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Many people interpret this verse to mean that as soon as you die, immediately you leave your body and then you get to be present with the Lord. But the question is, is that really what Paul is saying? When you look at the context here, Paul is talking about the transition from this life to the next, from uh, walking by faith to walking by sight. He says that in verse 7. And then in verse 4, he, he clarifies in the same chapter, he clarifies that we who are in this tent, referring to this body, we're groaning. Paul was groaning. He was in a sinful body and he longed to get out of that body and to be with Jesus. And in verse 4, he clarifies that that moment of transition occurs, he said, when mortality is swallowed up by life. So verse 8, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Verse 4, when mortality is swallowed up by life. Now, when you just go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul clarifies exactly when uh, mortality is swallowed up by life. And it is not at the moment of death. It is at the moment of the resurrection when Jesus Christ returns. In 1 Corinthians chapter, 50 verse, chapter 15, verse 50, he says, Now, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, referring to death. Death is sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead will be raised, incorruptible, there's a resurrection morning, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4, when mortality is swallowed up by life, that is at the last trumpet when Jesus returns, when the dead are raised, when the sleeping wake up, and when then we get to be with the Lord. So that's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8. Now, as far as the next question people have asked, the thief on the cross. And this is in Luke chapter 
chapter 23, and I want to clarify that I certainly do believe in the words of Jesus Christ. Whatever Jesus says, those words are right. The Bible is true, and we believe that 100%. Now, on the cross, Jesus was crucified next to two thieves, and verse 42 says, one of the thieves said to Jesus, he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So the thief is asking to be remembered when Jesus comes back, not at the moment of death. And then in verse 43, Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, many interpret this to mean that Jesus went to paradise that day, the thief went to paradise that day, and it happened at the moment when they both died. But let's just explore that a little bit. Uh, this is in verse 43. Now, my Bible says 4, 3, 43. Uh, most Bibles say that. But Luke, when he wrote this, he didn't write 42, 43, 44, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 2. That, those divisions and those numbers were added later uh, by people who were involved in the translation process. And it's the same thing with the uh, punctuation. The punctuation, such as commons, commas, they were added later. And so if you take out the punctuation or take out the comma, then what we have is Jesus saying, Assuredly, I say to you, now if you put the comma where it is now, then he says, today you'll be with me in paradise, implying it happens that day. But if you put the comma or take the comma out, or if you put it after the word today, then you have Jesus saying, Assuredly, I say to you today, meaning that day, Friday, as he was hanging on the cross, you will, in the future, be with me in paradise. So if there's no comma, then the question is, what did Jesus mean? Did he say, I tell you the truth, today you'll be with me in paradise? Or did he mean, I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise? Which one? The answer is in the Bible. Uh, the Bible is very clear that Jesus Christ did not go to paradise the day he died. When he rose from the dead in John chapter 20, verse 17, uh, a woman was there at the, at the morning of the resurrection, I believe it was Mary, and she grabbed onto him and Jesus said, Do not cling to me. This is John 20, verse 17. He said, For I have not yet ascended to my Father. So Jesus clarified in John 20, verse 17, that he, did not, he had not gone up to be with his Father until after his resurrection. Uh, and again, the thief asked to be remembered when he came. And in John chapter 14, Jesus makes it very clear when Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, he didn't say, I will meet you there when you die. But he said, I will come again and I will receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be with, with me uh, also. So when Jesus promised that the thief would be with him, he was referring to his coming, his second coming. He did not mean uh, at the moment of his death, because Jesus didn't go to paradise at the moment of his death. Now, third question has to do with the rich man and Lazarus. A lot of people wonder about that. If, if uh, Billy Graham is dead asleep in the grave, and if when people die, if they are dead asleep in their graves waiting for the resurrection, uh, as uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, then what about the story of the rich man and Lazarus, which is in Luke chapter 16? And I'll just quickly uh, share a few thoughts on this. If you've read the story, it's in Luke 16, verses 19 through 31. Jesus told a story about a certain rich man and a certain beggar, uh, the beggar died, and Jesus said that the angels carried him into Abraham's bosom. And then the rich man died, and he went into hell, and he was in torment. And he begins to talk to, uh, to the angels and to Father Abraham, and there's a conversation going back and forth between uh, the poor man and Father Abraham. Now, what do you do with this? Uh, people have quite asked us questions about this, that if our video is really right, that uh, the dead are dead, they're falling asleep, they're in the grave, they're waiting for the resurrection, they're unconscious, they're not floating around, 
They're not up in heaven. They're not, uh, their ghosts can't appear to us and look like little boys or look like dead people. Then what do you do with this story? Well, here's, here's uh, some, some quick thoughts on that. There are seven reasons that I can give you quickly why the story of the rich man and Lazarus is what, what the Bible calls a parable. It's a parable. And, and even before I mention that, let me just share that it's very significant that in Luke 16 and the story of the rich man and Lazarus, this is the only place in the entire New Testament where a person is represented as dying, in this case the rich man, and immediately going down to a place of fire where they can carry on a conversation. Uh, there's nothing like that taught in the book of Matthew. It's not in the book of Mark. It's not in the book of John. It's not in any of the writings of Paul. Nowhere in 1 Corinthians, Romans, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, Philippians, Colossians, nowhere in the writings of Paul does he ever teach the concept that a person a lost person, when they die, immediately they go to a place of burning. Now, the Bible does surely teach a hell, and it surely does teach a lake of fire in Revelation chapter 20. Uh, and Jesus said in, in Matthew 13, verse 40, that as the, as the weeds <clears throat> are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. So Jesus surely taught fire at the end of the world, but as far as it happening, uh, to a lost person at the moment of death, it's only in Luke chapter 16. And I'm going to give you seven reasons why that is a parable. Reason number one, uh, Jesus often began parables with a phrase like a certain rich man. In the same chapter, in Luke chapter 16, my Bible says this is the parable of the unjust steward, the parable. And then right there it says there was a certain rich man. And then we go down farther, there was a certain rich man going into the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. When you look at Luke 14, 16, Luke 15, 11, Luke 16, 1, Luke 19, 11, and verse 12, Luke chapter 20, verse 9, you see over and over and over again, Jesus begins parables exactly in this way. Uh, a certain rich man. So reason number one is it's a parable. Uh, reason number two, a, a man cannot physically enter into the bosom or chest of another person as Jesus described. If we take the story literally, then when the poor man died, uh, the beggar, he was carried and placed in the bosom of Abraham. Now, I don't think, I don't think anybody actually believes that uh, people go into the chest of Abraham when they die. That's obviously a parable. Uh, reason number three, People that are burning in hell down below and people up in heaven up above cannot carry on a normal conversation. And that's what you have here described in this parable where they're, they're talking back and forth. The, the rich man is talking to Father Abraham. They're having a conversation. Uh, reason number four is if somebody was literally burning in flames, they could not carry on a, a normal conversation. If you wonder whether that's true, just take your finger and put it on a stove, a hot stove or in a flame just for you know, one, one second. And obviously, you're not going to do this. But if you were to do that, you could not carry on a normal conversation. Uh, reason number five, <clears throat> Jesus represented the rich man as being bodily in hell with eyes, a mouth and a tongue, which is obviously symbolic. Um, Jesus said, you know, or the, the, the rich man looked up and said, Father Abraham, please send Lazarus to take his finger and touch my tongue because I'm being tormented in this fire. Uh, obviously, people don't have, you know, literal tongues and literal fingers and able to communicate back and forth like that. Uh, reason number six, a real burning man would not request a little bit of water to cool his tongue, which wouldn't really help much. And the reason why Jesus told this is because the Pharisees, if you look at the context, the Pharisees were mocking Jesus for his teaching about, uh, about money, that you can't serve God in money. So they mocked him with their tongues. And then Jesus told a story about a rich man who went to hell and who wanted to, a little water to touch his tongue because he was being tormented in this fire. And Jesus' point was that you're telling the Pharisees basically that your tongues are going to get you into a lot of trouble and eventually you're going to, you're going to end up in the lake of fire. Reason number seven, consciousness at death contradicts the rest of the Bible. The whole Bible is clear. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5 says the dead know nothing. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 says that there is no wisdom nor knowledge nor uh, device in the grave where people are going. 
On John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, Jesus said that everybody who's in their graves, someday they're going to hear his voice and they're going to come forth. Those who, who have done good will come up in the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil will come up in the resurrection of damnation. Six times in John chapter 6, verse 39, verse 40, verse 44, and verse 54, Jesus said that those who believe in him, he said, I will raise him up on the last day. And again, in John 14, verses 1 to 3, Jesus clarified that when he comes again, he will receive us to himself. So, and there's a lot of other questions that I'm sure people have. Uh, that's just three responses to absent from the body, the rich man and Lazarus, and the thief on the cross. Uh, we have a lot more information on our website on these topics. We certainly can't go into everything, but if you go to whitehorsemedia.com, uh, you'll see our article series called Death Discussions. We have a 12-part series that goes into a lot of these issues. On our YouTube channel, we have a four-part series called Deadly Delusions About Death and Hell. Uh, the links to these articles and videos are in the description of our main YouTube video on Billy Graham. Uh, and these uh, different productions answer a lot of other questions about uh, the Bible, about the spirit, the breath, the soul, the body, sleep, heaven, hell, the resurrection. And it looks at all these issues from God's word to see what the Bible really says. And again, our, our biggest concern, like the story I told about what happened in North Dakota, our biggest concern is that uh, people really don't believe that the dead are dead these days. And if you don't believe that, then you are uh, open, whether you realize it or not, to being uh, confronted by uh, and deceived by a demonic spirit impersonating someone who has died. And uh, Satan can impersonate Billy Graham. He can impersonate anybody uh, if he chooses to in the, in the days ahead. And we need to know what the Bible teaches about these topics so we will not be misled by the spirits of devils. Uh, my, my final point is that uh, really the issue that is the heart of all of this discussion about death and the resurrection and soul sleep and all of this is really, as I see it, it's the gospel. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And at Whitehorse Media, we believe that. We believe the Bible. We believe in the words of Jesus. We believe that that Jesus Christ really did die. He was really dead. If we don't believe the dead are dead, then it's hard to believe that Jesus Christ really died. But that's what the gospel's all about, is that he died for our sins. He really actually uh, experienced the full penalty and consequences of sin, and he died, and he was buried, and he rose again from the dead on the third day. And that's our hope, is Jesus and what he did and that he's gonna come back, he's gonna raise the dead, he's gonna translate the living, and he's gonna take us, uh, if we're faithful to him, up to be with him, so we can always be with the Lord, uh, present with the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 17. So I hope that this has helped answer some of these questions. Uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot more videos that we're gonna be producing and answering more questions. And so uh, may God bless you, may God bless all of us, may he bless our, our video that we've produced uh, on Billy Graham that uh, seeks to honor his life as a man of God who preached from, his, from the word of God and yet helps to clarify one issue and that has to do with death, burial, and resurrection. God bless you.